Good morning. Good morning, all. Welcome to our Mother's Day version of online church here at First Presbyterian Church in Noblesville. We welcome all of you who are gathered at 10 a.m. And uh, we're glad to have all of you who may join us later on in the day or later on during the week uh, from our post on our First Presbyterian Church website. We are all are welcome. We're glad to have you all here this morning. Just a couple of announcements to bring to you your attention. First of all, your session met on Wednesday evening along with some other leaders in the church. And we have decided our goal for right now, though that could change just depending on circumstances, our goal is to come back together at least in a limited form and perhaps with a number of restrictions involved as well to come back for public worship on June the 7th. So keep uh, your prayers going for that. We hope that we can gather uh, on that date. Also, this coronavirus COVID-19 has really shown us the need for upgrading our audio and our video capabilities, as well as our ability to do online streaming. Uh, it's kind of rushed us into this a little quicker than we had planned, but we have been planning for nearly two years now to upgrade our sound system. There's been a plan that's been ongoing and we've been preparing for it, but we believe that now is the time to begin implementing that program. And first of all, of course, it will take money to do so. So I hope you saw my trailer that uh, we made on Friday and also my uh, article in the news and notes that, which came out on Thursday that gives you more details about that. We're gonna try to fast track this, uh, this uh, capital campaign, we hope to raise $75,000 or at least have pledges for $75,000 by the middle of June. So pray and ask the Lord what he would have you do uh, during this time as we seek to upgrade uh, our capabilities, uh, audio and video and online streaming. Um, so with that, we welcome you to Online Church. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. And with that, we will begin our time of worship together. Good morning and happy Mother's Day. Please join me in the call to worship. Jesus comes among us today to bless us. My bow and humble worship our Savior. He comes to bless those who are not worthy. We acknowledge that we are also unworthy and welcome all our children with us. Some come to offer themselves in ways that may distract us. We know we are all different and we honor each other as we offer ourselves gifts. Let's pour out the sweet smell of grace to our God. We pour out the eyes to the one who comes in the past. Please join me in opening him.
The God who knows us better than we know ourselves invites us to come and confess the state of our lives so that we might receive forgiveness and newness of life. Please join me in the prayer of forgiveness. We confess with one another and to our God that we are a simple people. We have not loved as ourselves. We have not even loved ourselves at all. We have taken God's love for granted and failed to be warm lives. We have looked down on others and seek to feel better about ourselves. Forgive us and renew us as your image so that we may freely share your love with others. Amen. God loves, God loves you and all creation to living in your life and not your death. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Um, before we get started on our children's message this morning, we have um, a couple announcements. First thing I wanted to let you guys know is um, there was accidentally a misprint in the text that went out yesterday. There will actually not be a um, Zoom meeting for rainbows and shooting stars. We are going to be working on um, getting those set up. So hopefully um, next week we can, we can get back into the Zoom meetings. Um, Kendall Teague has um, made a music video for you guys for uh, Father Abraham. So if any of you um, would like to play that and um, dance and sing along to it, you could even do a uh, performance for your mothers maybe, I'm sure that they would appreciate that. Um, you can also upload a video of you guys singing and dancing to the Father Abraham and send it to me and we will get it on our um, Facebook page. So um, our message for today is going to be about Mother's Day. So I'm hoping that a lot of you are doing some special things to celebrate your moms and to make them feel special. So our, our video is going to be helping us to see the things that we need to do to not just celebrate our moms, to, but to actually show honor to them. So before we get into our video, let's go ahead and do a small prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for mothers or those special people who look after us and take care of us. We know they work hard and show us lots of love. Help us to show our love and care to them. Honor them and be thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. My mom is awesome. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I wanted to talk to you about Mother's Day. Yeah, and how we can honor our mothers how we can honor our moms. Now for me and my family on Mother's Day, we like to show my mom how much we love her because she does so much for us. She really does. She does so much for my family. And so on Mother's Day, we, we let her sleep in and we give her breakfast in bed and we write cards for her and we get her little gifts and, and we try to do all these nice things to show her how special she is to us. And you know, it's interesting because in the Bible, you probably know this, but in the Ten Commandments, it says that we should honor our father and mother. And that's the first commandment with a promise. It says that if we do that, if we honor our fathers and mothers, then things will go well for us. But usually when people are talking about the Ten Commandments and they get to the honor your father and mother part, they say, you know, obey your parents. And if you honor your mother, then you're going to be obeying her. So that makes sense. But you can totally obey somebody without honoring them. And that's not what God wants. God wants us to honor our father and mother. You know, my neighbor's cat is the worst. I usually think of myself as a dog person, but I've known several cats that I really liked. But not my neighbor's cat. He is so gross. He always knocks over our trash cans and gets in the garbage and eats it. And he always makes a huge mess. It's disgusting. And if we hear a trash can get knocked over, we always open the window and say, Hey, get out of here, cat! And he'll always obey us, but he always does it real sassy. Right? You know, he doesn't talk, but if he could talk, he would totally be like, yeah, fine, whatever. I'll get out of here. I didn't want your garbage anyways. <laughs> yeah, so he like obeys us, but he doesn't really care about us at all. If he honored us, if he cared about us, then he would, you know, not knock over our trash cans. Or if he did, he'd at least apologize. And so honoring your mom is a lot more than just obeying her. When you honor your father and mother, you are valuing them highly. You're being grateful for them. You are respecting them. You care about what they say and how they feel. And so the stuff we do for my mom on Mother's Day is totally an example of honoring our mothers. But we should be doing that all the time. Now, maybe we can't do all the things that we do for my mom on Mother's Day. Maybe we can't do those things every day. But when I sit down to write the Mother's Day card for my mom, I always feel really grateful for her because she's done so much for me. And I get this really happy feeling inside because I really love my mom. You know, on Mother's Day, we pull out all the stops. We do all the nice things for my mom. And so maybe we couldn't do Mother's Day every single day, but every day we can show my mom that we love her. Every day I can show my mom that I respect her and honor her. It's not just about obedience, it's about love and respect. And so that's my challenge to you guys today is that you would 
honor your mothers. Not just on Mother's Day, but every day. Because if you do, things will go really well for you. It's the first command with a promise. Our moms are amazing. So let's look for ways this week that we can show them love and respect and honor. Hey guys, happy Mother's Day. Hey guys. Hey guys. You, Trish. Let's take a few moments to share the joys and concerns and what we have in the bulletin this morning. Well, first of all, uh, Susan Clark asked us to pray for a family friend named Bill Nealis recuperating from unexpected open heart surgery this uh, uh, past week. So all together, Lord, hear our prayers for Bill. Uh, the orphans from Ukraine, our ministry there with Last Bell, uh, they need spiritual support with the shutdown of trade schools and orphanages. So, Lord, hear our prayers. And we want to continue as we are called in the scripture to pray for our government and political leaders, our governor, our state and local officials as the economy begins to reopen, and also for businesses who are struggling to stay open and they won't have to that they won't have to close their doors permanently. So, with that, Lord, hear our prayers. Of course, all of the medical professionals who are exposing themselves to take care of, of others. Lord, hear our prayers. And there are many who, especially on this Mother's Day, probably a lot of moms who are feeling isolated because their family, friends, they can't get together with people. Uh, we want to remember them during these times of social uh, distancing restrictions. So with that, Lord, hear our prayers. And Rick Mayhew has asked us to pray for a cousin named Tim Hansman, who was recently diagnosed with the coronavirus. So for Tim, Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray together. Oh God, we take these, these prayer requests, these joys, these concerns, we lift them up to you this morning. We know that there is so much going on in our world today that confuses us. We hear from the news media, news on one side of the issue and news on the other side of the issue, and we don't know what to think. But we do pray that uh, as we go forward here that you would be with our church leaders as we seek to reopen our time of, of public worship, give us wisdom and understanding, help us to, to know what is going on at the time and what is healthy and, and safe for the members of our congregation. So be with us during that time. Lord, we give you thanks for our moms on this Mother's Day. We're grateful for their love, for their care, for their tenderness, for the way they watch out for us, even when we don't live in the home anymore. So hear us now, O Lord, as we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
appreciate that so much. Well, on this Mother's Day, our scripture lesson comes from just one verse of the Bible, a verse that is very well known to us all. We don't always apply it as we should, but yet we know what it says. It comes from the Ten Commandments. It's the fifth of the Ten Commandments. We find it twice in the Old Testament, once in the book of Exodus and in, in the book of Deuteronomy as well. So listen to God's word. Honor your father and your mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And may the Lord God bless our lives with the reading and the hearing and the understanding of God's holy word. Well, there are three basic building blocks to any society. You must have all three for the society to functional, function in a normal way, in a way that, that helps everyone. The first of those building blocks is the family. The family, that's the first and the most important building block of any society is the family. Second building block that came along and each of these is instituted and regulated by God, and that is the state or our government. After the flood, after Noah and the flood, God had it to institute the state so that there would be protection for the families because there would be those who would be the natural enemies to the family. So the state came along, God instituted it to protect families. That's the second building block. And then the third, the one that came along after Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down, after Jesus was resurrected, the Holy Spirit came to build the church. And the church was a group of people who were like-minded, who came together to worship God, to learn more about their faith, to encourage one another, to love one another, to be there for each other. And they came also as a witness to those around them who did not know the Lord Jesus Christ. So those are the three basic building blocks 
that any society must have in order to be a successful society. And I hope my building blocks stay up there a little bit wobbly right now. But today, of course, we're gonna talk a little bit about the family because without the family, that is the most fundamental of all three of these. Without the family, the other two are inconsequential. So we have the 10 commandments. Commandments one through four are about our relationship with God, that vertical relationship we, with, that we have with God above. You shall have no other gods before me. Make no idols. Do not take the, the name of the Lord your God in vain. Number four is keep the Sabbath day holy. And number five, honor your father and your mother is a kind of a transition from the first four into the last five. Honor your father and your mother. In fact, all of the 10 commandments are about honoring. They're either about honoring God, honoring our parents or family, or they're about honoring the sanctity of life or the sacredness of sexuality, the value of property. It's about honoring the truth or honoring the possessions and characteristics of other people. So honor your father and your mother, then you will live a long and full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. There's a promise that comes with this commandment. Only one out of 10 commandments comes with a promise. Well, the family is the primary fundamental earthly relationship. It has profound implications for our lives every day. It has profound Im implications for each of us as individuals. It has profound implications for us as a family and implications for our nation, because the nation that has healthy families will be a healthy nation. It has implications for our ongoing life in the United States as one nation under God. A strong family life has implications today during these times of COVID-19 and coronavirus. Families are being stressed out because of the people are losing their jobs, they can't go back to work, I saw on the news this week about a woman who a, runs a beauty salon in Texas, and she needed to provide for her family, and the other uh, stylists who worked for her needed to provide for their families. So she went back to work, rather than going underground and going into people's homes and not knowing what the, the uh, situation was like in those homes or whether it was safe, she went back to work and she was taken to court because she wanted to provide for her family and she wanted her other style to be able to provide for their families as well. So if there is not that firm foundation of the family, it has profound implications for our country. This morning, I wanna ask three questions of this verse to honor, about honoring your father and your mother. The first question is, what does it mean to honor our father and our mother? What does it mean to honor our father and our mother. I've got my handy dandy little cards for you again this week. So what does it mean to honor our father and our mother? Well, that term honor means heavy or weighty. That means it is something that has great importance. Some of the synonyms that we might use for that word might be that we value, respect, or hold in esteem or reverence. And we show that value and esteem, that honor to our parents by listening to them and obeying their instructions, by learning from them so that we can become wise and not be foolish, by learning from their experience. We show honor to our parents by res respecting them and revering them. We don't always agree with them, but we can still show respect for them even if we disagree. We also honor our parents by honoring their faith in God. We may not always agree with them exactly how they exercise their faith, but we can still honor them because of the faith that they have in God and in Jesus Christ. Well, when Moses went up to the mountain and received the 10 commandments, and he came back down the mountain, number five 
did not say that um, fathers were more to be more honored than the mothers because in that day, women were seen as second class citizens by the culture. God didn't see them that way, but the culture did. So when, when Moses came down that mountain, he said to honor both mother and father equally, they are to be honored. Now, honoring is not really that difficult to do. You see, I, I believe that young children, children are born with a yearning and kind of a pre-programmed mind and heart. It's kind of in their DNA to honor their parents. They want to have a close, nurturing, loving relationship with their parents, a kind of a, a bonding sort of thing. And it takes some influence from the outside to deprogram that kind of bonding feeling and relationship that children have. Now that doesn't mean that parents and children will always agree with, with each other, but yet we know they still love us and they still care. And our parents teach us what is right from wrong or what is safe and what is dangerous. And they would want to prevent us from going through some of the heartaches that they faced in their own lives if they can do that. Parents loving children is a gift from God. And unfortunately, it doesn't always turn out that way. There are times when relationships between parents and children can become very difficult, which raises our next question, number two question, is are there any limitations when it comes to honoring and obeying our parents? Are there any limitations? Well, yes, there are. And let's be honest about it. There are parents who are abusive. There are parents who are neglectful. There are parents who abandon their children. How do we honor parents who don't seem at all honorable? Well, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 6 he says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So if you already have a difficult parental relationship, and you know the verse that says, honor your father and your mother, and now the Apostle Paul says, children, obey your parents, it just seems like it's just stacking it on. It's going to make it even more difficult. That verse from the Apostle Paul is also followed by these words from the Old Testament to honor your father but there's a case in there from the apostle paul children obey your parents in the lord in the lord you know our our parents may have little or no com connection with god or little or no connection with their their children and they'll go around living life cussing and drinking and doing drugs and they're lazy and they're self-centered they can't keep a job they are not at all responsible parents, and they're not certainly, certainly not setting a good example for, for their children. Some do some horrible things to their children or expose them to horrible things, rot and filth like pornography. And that's horrible. And there's a severe warning from Jesus in the Bible about those who reveal those kinds of things and put children in those types of situations. Mark chapter 9, verse 42, our Lord says, And if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. You see, the fantastic news is that when Jesus Christ is in one's heart, that is the only time that we that forgiveness and cleansing can become a part of our lives and we can take the past and put it behind us and begin to move forward with a guilt-free conscience. Dennis Prager, who is a, a political commentator but also writes about history and other things, he's Jewish and he's done a number of videos uh, about the Ten Commandments and I'm going to show you one of them at the end of the message. But Prager says that nowhere in the Bible is there a command that tells us to love our parents? There are commands to love our neighbor, to love God, to love the stranger, even to love our enemies. 
But instead, the Bible says to honor our fathers and our mothers. It doesn't say to love them, but to honor them because God knew there would be those difficult relationships between parents and their children. So that asks, we must ask the question, are the ways then that we can honor our parents even when we do not love them or when there's a strained relationship? And I believe we can, and there are an unlimited number of ways to do that. Here are a few. First of all, we can pray for our parents. The Bible tells us to pray for those who persecute you. Secondly, we can forgive. Forgiveness is so important and so, so necessary because if we do not forgive, if we hold unforgiveness in our hearts, we will not destroy the person who perpetrated us or who hurt us. We will only destroy ourselves. It's like this foundation right here. It's like if there is unforgiveness toward your parents, it's like putting cracks and holes in the foundation of your home you might be able to get away with it for a while, but eventually the house will begin to sag and things will change and you could put yourself in a very dangerous and unhealthy situation. Another idea is to get help to deal with the pain that you've suffered. Get help. Be healthy. Don't let it get to you. Put it behind you. And certainly don't try to sweep it all under the rug. There are a lot of people who just try to avoid it. They're in denial. Don't do that. Deal with it in a healthy way. Talk to your, a pastor. Go to a counselor. Talk with someone that you know will give you some good advice and good counsel. Another thing we can do is try to understand and accept the flaws of our parents. We're all imperfect. We're all sinners that fall short of the glory of God, some just more so than others. But try to understand Maybe they were raised in a very difficult home themselves and they knew nothing else. They didn't know how to be a parent. Find something that you can be grateful for. Even if it's just something very small, look for it. Try to find something good. Now, you might want to confront a parent, but be prepared. You might confront them and things might go well, but oftentimes they don't. Be prepared for them to be in denial about the situation. You have to do what you can do. You can't, you can't change what another person says or does. You can only be responsible for yourself. And then finally, even if you don't feel love from your parents, you can still care for them. You can still take action to show them that you care. Perhaps in these COVID-19 days, there's an opportunity to show them that you love and care just by checking in and making sure they're okay or if they need anything. So that's the second question. Are there any limitations when it comes to honoring and obeying our parents? Thirdly, the third question is, what did God have in mind when he issued this commandment with a promise attached? A promise attached. So it's like God is giving us uh, a reward, if you will. A benefit, there's a benefit with this. Hey, that's great. We all love to have a benefit or a reward in our lives. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Now, does that mean that we're all going to live many, many years? Certainly not. Things happen. We know that. But this was a promise that was made to the nation of Israel. It's not just about individuals, but it's about the nation as well. Because when the family is healthy, when the family becomes a firm foundation, that nation will be, uh, live long and be prosperous. It makes only common sense. If you live in a dysfunctional home that's filled with tension or strife or abuse or, or bickering, there's arguments all the time. That can easily have an effect on your physical life. It can create illness and emotional problems. And you may live a shorter, more miserable life because of it. But a home that's filled with love and joy, and peace and patience and kindness, all the fruit of the Holy Spirit, when you live in a house like that, a house that's emotionally stable, 
there's a better chance for good health and long life or as someone has said it not only adds years to your life but it adds life to the years that you have here on earth there's a quote that i want to share with you from the president a former president of asbury theological seminary nathan is going to uh, put it up on the screen i believe and so there we are this is from maxie dunham he's a uh, President Emeritus of Asbury Theological Seminary. He says, I believe one of the primary reasons Judaism has survived across the years is precisely its family structure. The Jews survived the Holocaust and thousands of years of anti-Semitism because the Jewish family had a sense of identity and a sense of order. It doesn't matter where the family is on the Sabbath, when the Sabbath comes, they stop and pray. It doesn't matter what Hitler and all the powers of Nazism said. When Passover came, it was time to tell the story. Even if the family was gathered in a concentration camp and there were no candles to light. There was a sense of order and identity that gave them roots and strength and perspective and discipline. At the heart of that family esteem, uh, at the heart of that family structure was a reverence for parents, a high regard, a respect, and esteem for the older members of the family. The elderly were honored and cared for. This Mother's Day presents a number of extra challenges than normal Mother's Day. It may be difficult to go visit your mother, depending on where they live or their circumstances and these COVID-19, uh, with all these COVID-19 restrictions. I know there are some of you that have mothers in healthcare facilities or in retirement centers, and they're on lockdown and you can't go see them. So you might call them on the phone or FaceTime them if they know how to do technology, or I've heard of some people going to the exterior window of the places where they live so that they can open the window and have a conversation with each other. But certainly there are gonna be greater challenges today than there normally would be. But even with that, I wish all of you a, a happy Mother's Day, of this Mother's Day of 2020. I wanna close now, Nathan's gonna show a, a video from Desus Prager, it's about five minutes in length, but it is a great summary of what we've been trying to say here today through both the, the children's message and uh, the message that I've shared with you as well. So happy Mother's Day to you all. The fifth of the Ten Commandments reads, Honor your father and your mother. This commandment is so important that it is one of the only commandments in the entire Bible that gives a reason for observing it. That your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Many people read that part of the fifth commandment as a reward. But while it may be regarded as a reward, the fact remains that it is a reason. If you build a society in which children honor their parents, your society will long survive. And the corollary is, a society in which children do not honor their parents is doomed to self-destruction. In our time, this connection between honoring parents and maintaining civilization is not widely recognized. On the contrary, many of the best educated parents do not believe that their children need to show them honor since honoring implies an authority figure. And that is a status many modern parents reject. In addition, many parents seek to be loved, oh. not honored by their children. Yet neither the Ten Commandments nor the Bible elsewhere commands us to love our parents. This is particularly striking given that the Bible commands us to love our neighbor, to love God, and to love the stranger. The Bible understands that there will always be individuals who, for whatever reason, do not love a parent. Therefore, it does not demand what may be psychologically or emotionally impossible, but it does demand that we show honor to our parents. And it makes this demand only with regard to parents, there is no one else 
who the Bible commands us to honor. So then, why is honoring parents so important? Why does the Ten Commandments believe that society could not survive if this commandment were widely violated? One reason is that we as children need it. Parents may want to be honored, and they should want to be, but children need to honor parents. A father and a mother who are not honored are essentially adult peers of their children. They are not parents. No generation knows better than ours the terrible consequences of growing up without a father. Fatherless boys are far more likely to grow up and commit violent crime, mistreat women, and act out against society in every other way. Girls who do not have a father to honor, and hopefully to love as well, are more likely to seek the wrong men and to be promiscuous at an early age. Second, honoring parents is how nearly all of us come to recognize that there is a moral authority above us to whom we are morally accountable. And without this, we cannot create or maintain a moral society. Of course, for the Ten Commandments, the ultimate moral authority is God, who is therefore higher than even our parents. But it is very difficult to come to honor God without having had a parent, especially a father, to honor. Sigmund Freud, the father of psychiatry and an atheist, theorized that one's attitude towards one's father largely shaped one's attitude toward God. There's one more reason why honoring parents is fundamental to a good society. Honoring parents is the best antidote to totalitarianism. One of the first things totalitarian movements seek to do is to break the child-parent bond. A child's allegiance is shifted from parents to the state. Even in democratic societies, the larger the state becomes, the more it usurps the parental role. Finally, there are many ways to honor parents. The general rule is this, they get special treatment. Parents are unique, so they must be treated in a unique way. You don't talk to them in quite the same way you do anyone else. For example, you might use expletives when speaking to a friend, but you don't with a parent. You don't call them by their first name. And when you leave their home and make your own, you maintain contact with them. Having no contact with parents is the opposite of honoring them. And yes, we all recognize that some parents have behaved so cruelly, and I mean cruelly, not annoyingly, that one finds it morally impossible to honor them. There are such cases, but they are rare. And remember this, if your children see you honor your parents, no matter how difficult it may sometimes be, the chances are far greater that they will honor you. I'm Dennis Prager.
join with me and uh, join with me and those around you for our benediction as we close our service today. And now may the living Christ go with you, before you, to show you the way, behind you, to encourage you, beside you, to be your friend, above you, to watch over you, and within you, to give you peace. And all of God's people say, Amen. Thank you.